All right, today we're going to talk about the state standard 8EE1. This is um, an extension of the last time we talked about expressions and equations. This is eighth grade. Um, we're still in part one of the standard, and this is the second video that I was talking about earlier um, before we talked about all positive exponents. And today we're going to talk about uh, exponent called zero and some negative exponents. We already have these terms uh, that you should know previously in your journal. You've already defined them, I, I hope. Um, again, we're going to be talking today about quotients and products involving exponents. In the last video, we talked about the product of powers property. And that property basically states that if we have two values um, that have exponents, we'll call it a to the m multiplied, here's your product, times a to the nth, as long as these bases, base a, are the same and we're multiplying, the quick rule is to take your exponents m and n, and you are to add them, put them together. Um, I've added a little uh, part down on the bottom. It's not really the zero exponent rule, but I basically took um, the m and I replaced it with a zero. And I'm going to show you what happens to that. Again, we can still follow our rule of adding the exponents. So if I were to take a to the zero multiplied by a to the n, what would we do? We would take zero and add it to n. Well, anything added to zero is always going to be equal to itself. So a to the 0 multiplied by a to the n would have to equal a to the n. All right, well, if you think about that, um, what number in the world, when you multiply by some number a to the n, it could be anything you want, what would you get? Well, if you're going to get a to the n, what is that number that you would multiply by to get itself? Well, that's always 1. 1 multiplied by anything is always equal to itself. So that's how we come up with a to the n. If that's confusing, I, um, I have our base 10. I went all the way up to the sixth power. So I'm just going to kind of jump right into the middle here with some of the numbers that you already know. If you think about 10 to the second power, 10 squared, that would be 10 multiplied by itself, which is equal to 100. 10 cubed would be equal to 1,000, or 1 with three zeros. 10 to the fourth power would be 1 with four zeros, or that would be called 10,000. And I'm just going to keep going here to show you a pattern. One, two, three, four, five. That would be one with five zeros, also known as a hundred thousand. And this is one with six zeros, also known as a million. So if we follow the pattern going upwards now, 10 to the sixth is one with six zeros. The next one up is one with five zeros. 10 to the fourth is one with four zeros. 10 to the third or 10 cubed is one with three zeros. 10 squared is one with two zeros. 10 to the first would be a one with one zero and then let's finish it off with this new guy called 10 to the zero power well that would be a one with zero zeros well what is one with zero zeros that would be equal to one so the basic rule of what they're trying to say in the property on the page behind is anything to the zero power would have to be equal to one if you were to check out that base 10 page. So here's a, another proof of that. I'm not going to go through the entire list, but any number that you take, like 7, you would say, well, 
7 times 7 is equal to 49. And 7 to the first power would just be 7. So what would 7 to the 0 power be? Well, that would be, again, what we said, 1. Anything to the 0 power is always equal to 1. All right, let's put some algebra into this. Right from the standard, it says, apply the properties of integer exponents to generate equivalent numerical expressions. So how can I rewrite this meaning the same thing? x to the 0 multiplied by y to the fifth. Well, the bases are the same, so I'm not really adding the exponents. What I am doing, though, is I'm going to rewrite this expression, what it really means. x to the 0, x to the 0 really means, let me use different color here x to the 0 really means 1. If the numbers or letters are touching each other, that means we multiply. So 1 multiplied by y to the 5th has to be y to the 5th. So there's an expression that is written differently or equivalently. And now let's just kind of simplify that. What is 1 multiplied by y to the 5th? Well, anything multiplied by 1 is always equal to itself. So there is your new expression. It is equivalent to the previous expression, what we started with, and they both mean the same thing. Next, we have the quotient of powers property. And if you recall from the last video, if our bases are the same, A and A, we would have to take the exponents and subtract them. So we have a to the m minus n. And again, I kind of rewrote this property down below. I have put a 0 into it. And for the n, I put a 0. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the top and divide it by the bottom. And anything we know right now, this is actually equal to 1. Anything divided by 1 is always equal to itself. So you could see that a to the m is still a to the m. And I have a chart here. I'm just going to use the base 2 to kind of explain um, you know, where this negative exponent comes in handy here. Um, negative exponents get a little trickier. You know, The 0 exponent is pretty self-explanatory. I think uh, the best way to show this would be on the next page. Um, the top of this, when I, when I get up to 2 to the negative first and 2 to the negative second, will get a little, uh, a little confusing. So I will clean that up on the next page for you start down here on the bottom. 2 to the fourth. That's equal to 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. 2 cubed. 2, 3. 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 2 squared. It's 4. 2, we now know that this is equal to 1. And here we are with these new exponents, and they're both negatives. Well, if we look at the pattern from the bottom to the top, what are we doing as we get from one number to the next, to the next, and so on and so forth? It looks like when we go from 16 to 8 and 8 to 4 and 4 to 2, there's a little pattern here. And it looks like what we're doing is we're either um, multiplying by half or also dividing by 2. So if I were to keep dividing by 2, you know, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And 2 divided by... 1 is equal to, I'm sorry, 2 divided by 2 is equal to 1. And we are at a standstill. Well, you're okay with fractions now. We've talked a lot about fractions this year. So if we were to take this final number 1 and divide it by 2, what is 1 divided by 2? Well, we would end up with this thing called 1 divided by 2, which is a half. And if I were to divide a half by 2, we would end up with um, 1 fourth.
Okay. Well, keep going with the pattern. We have one half, we have one fourth, we have one eighth, we have one sixteenth, and you can keep going and going. And these numbers are just going to keep getting smaller and smaller as the exponents get smaller and smaller. Well, I use um, this thing called the house method. I have a little house here on the left, and then I have uh, a fraction on the right, and I'm gonna use the house to kind of explain what happened with those negative exponents. All right, let's start with a positive exponent first. If I were to say, what is two to the third power? Well, that's two times two times two, which is eight. I can always take a number, no matter what it is, and put it over one, and I could always multiply it by one, and that will never change the value. Anything multiplied by one is equal to itself, so one times two to the third is equal to eight, and anything divided by one is always equal to itself, so eight divided by one is equal to eight. And what I see here is I see from the beginning part of this that my exponents were all positive. So let me clear that off and show that to you again. All of my exponents are positive. So 2 to the third is a positive exponent. Well, in my house, I have a house party. Some kids, uh, you know, they really adhere to this. They really like this example. It helps them uh, when it comes to the problems later on. I call the, this house a house party. And, you know, we have an upstairs of the house and we have a downstairs to the house. And I don't know, maybe upstairs the kids are, uh, you know, playing video games at this party. And then downstairs uh, the kids are playing, um, you know, maybe a game of pool. Um, I don't know, something, maybe they're dancing downstairs. So if I have kids that are upstairs at the party and the kids that are downstairs at the party, uh, they're all happy where they're at. So if I have two to the third over one, both exponents are happy where they are. They're very happy, um, happy positive kids. Uh, and that would be eight over one, which is equal to eight. Now, if I were to change the exponents in the very beginning of the problem, maybe we have uh, 2 to the negative second power. Remember, I could always put it over 1. That doesn't change the value. I could always multiply the top by 1, and that won't change the value. But I do see here that in the top, I have a negative exponent, and in the bottom, I have a positive exponent. So if I have somebody at my party, at my house party, here we go, upstairs, you know, um, they are not very happy with where they're at. They're very negative. They're bringing everybody down. They're not happy at my party. So what's going to happen is they'd rather go downstairs to the party. They're going to come over here and they're going to go downstairs. And instead of being negative two, now they are very happy, positive people because you never want a negative exponent in your answer. So we want to make everybody positive and everybody happy. And by doing that, you're going to change uh, the number from you know, one part of the fraction to the other part, and that will change its sign for you. Kids really remember that. They don't want the negative signs, so they move them to the other part of the fraction. All right, so um, remember, we can't leave the upstairs blank. Uh, now that we've moved this two to the negative second downstairs, it kind of leaves the upstairs empty. But remember, it's not empty because we had this one up here that didn't change the value. So we're going to leave that one up there. And how does that reduce down? Well, that's going to reduce down to one in the top, which is very happy, two to the second, who's now happy. We call that positive four. And we have a fraction that has all positive, happy exponents. Well, let's see if that makes sense. On our chart, what was 2 to the negative second? Let's go back a couple pages. Oh, one page. 2 to the negative second, as we just stated, is equal to 1 fourth. OK, so how does this look um, with a problem that you might see? It says 3 to the negative seventh divided by 3 to the power of 5. 
um, you know, based on video one, what are we to do? The bases are the same. So if my base is three and three, what am I to do with my exponents? I am to subtract them. So three to the negative seventh minus five will have to equal three to the, uh-oh, we have an unhappy negative exponent in our answer. So we cannot have that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make our house. Here comes the house party. Right now, if you recall, three to the negative 12th is upstairs. There's a one downstairs and there's a one also up top. So what are we gonna do to make this exponent or this person at the party happy? Instead of being upstairs where they're not having fun, they're gonna go downstairs and they're gonna be positive. Now they're excited to be there. They're happy and they're positive. And then what, what stays upstairs is that one that never changes the look of the problem. So we now have a fraction. And if you want to evaluate that, you probably take out a calculator and figure out what uh, 3 to the 12th is. And you would have 1 over you know, whatever that number comes out to be here, 3 to the 12th power. It's a very, very big number. It's actually a very small number because it's a fraction, but your denominator happens to be a, a large number. Okay, let's put it all together. Um, in the numerator, we're going to do all, all of our simplification first. Let's simplify the top. Uh, bases are different here for the coefficients, so we have 2 multiplied by 9. You learned this in the last video. 2 times 9 is 18. W to the negative third multiplied by W to the negative fourth. Remember, now we add those exponents because we're multiplying. So negative three and negative four gets you negative seven. And there's nothing to really do right now in the bottom. So we'll leave it as is. And now we have a quotient. Well, now we got to go to the quotient of power rule. And what are we going to do? We're going to divide. So 18 divided by 6 can be simplified. That goes to 3. And then what do we do with our Ws? Um, by rule, we are to now subtract them because we're dividing common bases. So negative 7 uh, subtracted by negative 2. Let's see what that comes out to be. 3 w to the let's see add the opposite so negative 7 plus the opposite of negative 2 is 2 that's going to get you 3 w to the negative fifth can't be my final answer i see somebody at my party is very very unhappy very negative so let's create the house here i have my upstairs and i have my downstairs and they put in your ones Okay, well, 3 has an exponent of 1 also, and it's a very happy 1. So that 3 is going to stay up top because it's very happy positive, and this w to the negative fifth is going to come downstairs and become very happy. I mean, you could put your 1s in there and, and do the math on that, but uh, we don't need the 1s anymore because I have someone in the numerator and someone in the denominator. So if we don't know what W is to substitute in there uh, and they want just an equivalent uh, numerical expression, we end the problem with this fraction. Everybody's positive, everybody's happy. All right, so uh, some of that was absolutely brand new to you. Um, there's no doubt. Uh, we're gonna do many, many more problems in class together now. Um, for tonight in your journal, page two, if you haven't already defined the words um, given to you, I'd like you to do that. And I know there's new things uh, that you have learned today. I'd like you to write um, whatever you learned in a few sentences uh, from this video.